What's going on Reefers? Blaine here. In today's video, we're gonna be starting a brand new series called A Day in the Life of Top Shelf Aquatics. Today, we're gonna be hanging out in the retail store, but it's gonna be a special one because today we're gonna be heading out to the airport, grabbing a fish shipment, getting it all unboxed and getting it ready for you guys. I can't wait to show you guys this video, start this new series and dive in. All right, we're hanging out here with Colson, one of the retail associates here at Top Shelf Aquatics. Colson, what are we gonna be getting into right now? Uh, well, right now we're gonna move all the fish that are on the back side that have been here for a while. We're gonna put them on the front side. Um, we do this that way when you come in, you can see the fish we've had for a while and you know which ones have been here a while and which ones have. Nice, all right, yeah, let's do it. So Colson, how many fish do you think we can actually hold in this fish system here at Top Shelf? Probably a good couple, like 100, 200. Okay. I mean, comfortably. Black Friday, we get a lot of fish. Like gotcha. Hundreds, but not necessarily the greatest. We're getting fish moved around in the fish wall. We're getting everything set. And now it's time to start heading out to the airport and grabbing our new shipment. All right, Reefers, we're here at the airport. I'm hanging out with Jed, the director of sales. He's gonna be helping me out throughout the process, picking up these fish. So Jed, go ahead and take it away. What are we doing here today? So we're out here at Delta Cargo right now at MCO Airport. It's kind of behind the scenes. Not a lot of people come back here. It's nothing really special, but this is where all our fish come in from LA. Uh, so let's go check them out. Sweet, let's do it. So we're about to get the boxes from the airlines, but I wanted to ask you real quick, Jed, how often are we picking up these fish and how often are we coming out to the airport? Every single week. So every Tuesday, you know, they get shipped out on Monday. We order on Saturday. So if you need any fish, definitely let me know on Saturday so I can get it out here. Uh, but yeah, every Monday they're shipping from LA and then first thing Tuesday morning they're here. Nice, so weekly shipments coming to Top Shelf so you guys can get your fish. All right, we're all loaded up. We've got all the boxes in the back, getting ready to head back to Top Shelf. We'll get all these fish on box. I was gonna be excited, but I'm getting a phone call. Now. Let's go! Back here at Top Shelf now, we're gonna start getting all of these fish inside and start getting them on box. I cannot wait to see what we received and see what you guys can grab up yourselves. So we've got the boxes here now, Jed. What's the next step for us? So we got a couple more boxes to get in here. Um, we keep them all you know, organized by company. There's three different companies that we buy fish from from LA. So we're just getting out of the van now and then we'll start checking them off. So basically we have these tags here and uh, basically we put the tag up like this until the fish is in the tank and then we put the t uh, tag down once the fish is in the tank. So we can kind of have a little system so we know what fish is out, what fish isn't. Yeah, that's pretty much it. We popped the first box open. What's on our list now? So we just popped out three blue velvet nudies. So the next so I write thing those down we're grab into right the box, not gonna look. Big it's gonna be a Scott's Ferry. Oh, look at that, it is the oh, Scott's Ferry. I guessed Ferry. it. All right, we're gonna mark that off. So this is an Australian Scott's Ferry. Scott's Ferries come from a bunch of different areas of the world. The Australia is definitely one of the nicest ones. Uh, definitely nice reds and greens. That thing is a beautiful fish. Basically, when Jed tells me what fish is here, Engineer got me. like that, I'll mark it off that we got it to make sure we got what we got, what we ordered from, from the wholesaler. All right, next up we got a Coral Beauty, nice size one. These guys are probably one of the most common, if not the most common dwarf pygmy angels in the hobby. Oh, these are actually a good size. These are Australian stripies. Um, they're not the prettiest fish. I do think they're pretty cool when they get big. They got yellow and black stripes, but what's cool about these guys is they're probably the best Aptasia eating thing 
in the industry right now. I've been putting them in a bunch of tanks and they haven't really gone for coral, but I had people eliminating Aptasia pretty much within you know three weeks in their tank. And these are infested tanks. These are definitely the go-to right now. Next up, we have some sand sifting starfish. These are available on our website. If you're having issues with diatoms or anything really with your sand bed not looking too pretty, these guys are awesome. They're gonna go deep into the sand as well. So definitely something you wanna check out. All right, next up we got a zebra bar goby. These have been some of my favorites recently because they are super hardy. They stay at the top of the surface. They do jump a good amount, but you can have just a big school of them. I mean, we even catch them with our hands because they're just, yeah, they're just so used to people. Uh, but they add a lot of movement to the tank. And what's nice is, they're, again, they're not in the bottom of the tank, they're at the top surface, which is not a lot of fish. So it definitely adds a different dimension to your tank. So here we have an orange back or a flame back uh, pygmy angel, another really cool angel. We have a Mexican rainbow wrasse. These are female paddle fin wrasses, so when they get big, they're gonna have really nice pinks and yellows. This is a fish, it's in a bag, also known as a convict tang. They're good algae eaters. They usually don't get as big as other tangs. They also are a lot slower growing as well. As a lot of people know tangs grow really quickly. Convict tangs will grow a lot slower. So if you are looking for a tang for a smaller tank, which we don't recommend, but if you want something that's gonna be good for algae eater, convict tang's the way to go. Box seven. Oh. Paper. <laughs> All right, next up we have a Heniocus butterfly. This is a brown Heniocus butterfly. So the Heniocus butterfly family has a bunch of different species in it. This is one actually new to here at Top Shelf. Never really brought this one in because it's not the standard one that you're looking for. You know, the white and black stripes that kind of look like a Moorish idol. It's a little different, but definitely a cool fish. All right, this guy is really cool. Look at that beautiful pattern on him. This is, I gotta keep my hands away a little bit. This is actually a fuzzy dwarf lion fish. Definitely venomous, not reef safe. Um, but he is pretty small. They're only gonna eat things that will fit in their mouth. So you can technically keep them with some bigger fish. You just wanna make sure they're not getting picked on or anything like that. All right, next we actually got the orange spot file fish. I believe we got a pair of these guys. Super cool fish. Um, they're not reef safe again. Uh, they do eat SPS polyps and sometimes they only eat SPS polyps. Um, but we have gotten here at Top Shelf, uh, a lot of the time we got them to eat frozen, which is pretty cool. Next up we have a geometric hogfish. This is actually a type of anthias, which most people aren't aware of. They stay really small, so they're good for nano tanks. They don't add a lot of movement, so if you have a smaller tank, they don't need as much space because they're just kind of perched up everywhere. Uh, next up, we have one of the biggest puffers I've ever seen. Uh, I don't even know if I can lift this bag by itself, we'll see. <laughs> Look how cute that thing is. So we have a whip fin fairy wrasse. They're gonna have a really nice long streamer on the top of their dorsal. They're gonna have a kind of more rainbow with the white belly. Definitely a nice addition to the tank. All right, next up is a rusty angel. This is one of my favorites. I think it's super underrated. They look similar to a shepherd's angel, if you know what that is. Uh, but they have really nice purple on the fins, but just the rusty color where they get their name from. Next up, we have a Midas Blenny, one of the most classic fish in the tank. They come out, they do hide a little bit, but when you feed the tank, they'll come out and slither out. And it's just like a gold bar swimming through the tank. If you're looking something to put into your tank that's not clowns or damsels at the start of your tank, Midas Blenny is a good way to go because they are pretty hardy and they're not super aggressive. So when you add fish after them, they're not gonna just be super territorial and just wreck other fish. So these are black spot cleaner asses or golden cleaner asses. These guys are really cool. You know, most people have just the regular blue stripe cleaner asses that come from Africa. These guys are really cool because they get a little different colors to them. All right, next up we have the purple queen anthias. These guys are a beautiful color of pink with a nice orange stripe down them. They are a little finicky, so sometimes it's a little tougher to get them eating. Recently though, we have had really good success with them. Not really putting them in any copper treatment just to try to make sure they're not as stressed and just kind of as chill as possible, but they are a beautiful, beautiful fish. This is another predator fish. This is a clown grouper, similar to any other grouper. If it's smaller than it, it will eat it. I always say they're not super aggressive fish, they're just hungry fish. If they can fit in their mouth, they will eat it, and they will eat it every single day until they literally explode. Next up is one of my personal favorites. This is probably my favorite fish I've ever kept personally. This is the Flame Angel. They have a beautiful purple tail. It's almost metallic color. They do get you know decently big, and they can be a little aggressive, but there's just nothing as red as that fish in a tank. This is definitely a showstopper. Next up, we have a scorpion fish. This is a yellow spotted scorpion fish. It is a dwarf one, so it doesn't get too big. So if you're looking for a small kind of predator, this would be a good option. This is a bamboo shark, little female we got here. Perfect size for beginners. Well, not beginner 
<laughs> aquarium keepers. But if you want a shark, you know, you've had experience in the hobby, this is like the perfect size for you. But definitely an expert level fish. They require a lot of care, softer sand, really big tanks. But you know, shark is a staple in the hobby. So if you want to get one, we always keep them in stock. All right, next up we have a black ribbon eel. Where's the head, where's the tail? So hard to tell, here's the head over here. These guys are escape artists, so you definitely gotta have a lid on them. This is gonna be a juvenile. They do grow into a nice, blue, beautiful fish. They get big. I've seen them in reef tanks before, but they are known to go after the smaller fish. If you have a reef tank with mostly tangs in it, this is a cool addition. It's something that not everyone has in their reef tank. So this is the last box for this order. We got some cool newspaper with some languages I can't understand. <laughs> All right, guys, this is our last box. Uh, it's mostly inverts in here, but we got a whole process and a whole bunch of fish we gotta get into our system. I can't wait to show you guys. All right, we're in the back here of Top Shelf Aquatics. We've got all the boxes here. We're starting to make our way through. We have Colson right here, starting to get everything out of bags, and we're gonna start doing our preventative dipping process. Not every single fish is gonna go through the dipping. The sensitive fish will head straight out to the fish wall. The rest of them, though, will go through the dipping, and then they'll make their way out. We've gone through all the small to medium sized fish. We're gonna check out two really big fish that we got in on this shipment though. So this fish right here takes up the entire box. Oh my God, oh, can't see it. Oh. Oh. All right, you ready? Oh. I'll be very careful with this guy because he's got the massive thorns next to his gills. But I mean, this is, this is one of the dream fish of most hobbyists, the Emperor Angel. They get bigger than this. We've had one that was even bigger than this, but this is an absolute stud of a fish. All right, next up, what is this guy? This is a beautiful white unicorn. This fish is gonna be gorgeous. I can tell by just the size of it. So he's got a little bit of a bump. You can see where the horn's gonna come out right about here. I mean, this guy is still not even close to full grown. As they get bigger, I mean, this fish is gonna be over two feet long and that horn can get up to six inches, which is just insane to see. Um, so this guy's got a lot of growing to do. got a lot of fish in these buckets. They're out of the bags and through the dipping process, I'm gonna give Colson a hand here getting everything into the fish wall. The fish wall is starting to fill out. It is crazy how many fish we've gotten in. If you guys are looking to grab some fish, head over to our website or come into the store and check them out for yourself. Alrighty guys, we just got an order for one of our fish. It is a Biota Captive Bread Marine Beta. This thing is this big, so we're gonna make sure it has a nice big box, gets you as safe as possible. Let's go bag it up. All right, so over here is gonna be our Biota Captive Bread Marine Betas. Look how tiny they are. They don't even have all their full spots. There's actually a lot of cool fish over in this area. If there's any fish that you guys are looking for, you know, we definitely have a great selection right now, especially on wrasses. We have black-tailed tamarins, ear muff wrasses, moiri leopard wrasses, even magma wrasses, which you don't see a lot. You even have ghost ribbon eels. There's a latigo wrasse in here. Uh, there's stuff everywhere. Swiss guard bassalet, not even wrasses. Just this area alone, and we have this whole massive fish area, invert section as well. So if you need anything, definitely let us know. We can definitely get it for you. Let's bag these guys up. <laughs> Look how cute that little guy is. Or the lady, we don't know. Well, let's bag it up. Now we have a big variety of fish sizes in our store, so we make sure we keep a big variety of bags as well. 
This guy's pretty small though, so we don't need a massive bag. But I don't love shipping out big fish, but I mean, I got big fish to get rid of as well. The golden back trigger, how often do you see that? I couldn't even tell it kind of came out of the bucket. It was so small. <laughs> now all of our fish are bagged with oxygen and they're bagged, double bagged, sometimes triple bagged to make sure they arrive to you in the best shape. All fish are shipped overnight. If you order something one day, it will make sure that we'll get it there in the morning of the following day or whenever you want your arrival date to be. And just like that, we have our guy all bagged up. Plenty of water, plenty of space, swimming space, not gonna be too stressful on the fish. But let's go bring it over to the farm so we can bag it up, put heat packs and packing peanuts to make sure it's as stable as possible. All right, so now we're over here at our packing station of the farm. We're gonna fill it up with some peanuts. We're gonna check the weather of where the fish is going, see if it needs a heat pack, a cold pack, or nothing. All right, so we checked the weather report. Weather's a high of 79, so we definitely don't need a heat pack. And it's going pretty close, so we don't need a cool pack either. Just gonna keep nothing, but we do gotta get packing peanuts in there. So let's get it boxed up. So this is our acclimation guide. Unfortunately, this is not for our fish, but this is for our coral, and it is on all of our coral shipments. But it's on all our shipments anyway, so we're gonna throw this in here. Box on top. Now let's get some tape. Now we're gonna slap a shipping label on it and FedEx is gonna come pick it up. All right guys, we're all finished up. We've got all the fish in the fish wall. We've done the unboxing and we've showcased everything. I want these guys to take it away, but I wanna say thank you so much to Jed and Colson for helping out today and we'll let them take it away. We appreciate you guys watching. If there's anything in the video that you're interested in, make sure you give us an email, a call, and we'll definitely hold it for you. We can even ship it to you if you're not local, but if you are, definitely come check it out. We have a bunch that you do this every single week. We're always full. Most fish there is, so come check it out. Sweet. Don't forget, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. We'll catch you guys on the next upload. See ya. <laughs>